Okay, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Hacking Self Storage. Sorry, this message is one day late. The reason being is that I was away yesterday. I was down in Windsor and Legoland and Windsor Races, all that good stuff with a family yesterday. And I did try to set up my iPhone, but to be honest, I just thought it'd be best if I just do it today. So yeah, that's the reason why it's one day late. Now, this is why I love doing this podcast. For me, it is so valuable. Um, it's a documentation and it makes me question my figures. It makes me question my assumptions. And this is exactly what we're doing today. So at the minute, we're having a very, very, very ropey, rough time of it at the minute at Storm or Beverly site. It's doing amazing. Um, we're purchasing a new site at Beverly. So we're going to do indoor and outdoor. Um, all that good stuff is with solicitors. However, Stormore, since we've increased the prices, it's got a little bit rocky now. And I wanted to document the whole journey with you guys. And I'm going to continue this on to tomorrow's episode because we're talking about sub supporting KPIs because the overall revenue is good. That's the number one KPI. However, it quite frustrates me when I hear other people say, it's revenue, 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 revenue. It's all that matters, all that matters. Yes, in the grand scheme of it, it is all that matters is revenue. Of course it is. However, revenue can only be there if it's got supporting KPIs performing well. And so tomorrow I'm going to go into all my supporting KPIs, what I really look at for, because we all know that I've got so many KPIs, but number one KPI is revenue. And then the, the second most important group is my supporting KPIs. So I've had so many emails asking me about the supporting KPIs and what and how we look at these. So tomorrow I'm going to go into that in depth. Um, well, not too much in depth, but I'm basically going to tell you what they are. And that is the reason, my friends, why we have decided to change something. And we're going to, I'm going to tell you about it all tomorrow. We're bringing back half price. And again, I'll tell you more about that tomorrow, but the supporting KPIs aren't performing well. And the problem is if the supporting KPIs aren't performing well, that will inevitably filter down into the big KPI, the revenue. And so we need to keep watering the KPIs, keep allowing them, the supporting KPIs, keep allowing them to grow and nurture them and just keep an eye on them. And if things change, we change because we've got to protect the number one KPI, which is revenue. How can we protect it? We make sure we look after the supporting KPIs. And that, my friends, is exactly what we're talking about tomorrow. And yeah, the, the reason, or you'll see the reason being, uh, I'm going to run through these as quick as I possibly can do. Um, so the amount of quotes, it's 60. So good, really good, really, really high number of quotes. Amount of quotes per day is 8.57. Number of reservations is 10. That's one of my supporting KPIs. That is not good. That's 16, well, 17% 17 conversion rate from quotes to reservations. Now, I've had a meeting with the staff and I've said that the team, like saying staff, I've said that, listen, it's so easy to use it as an excuse saying, well, we're more expensive than everybody else now. We're much more expensive. We don't have any offers like everybody else. So therefore, that's the reason. And to be fair, it probably is the reason. However, we don't want that to be the go-to excuse because if we allow ourselves to sit back on that excuse, then we're never going to improve. We're never going to get better. And quite frankly, subconsciously, we're probably thinking, well, it doesn't matter if I get a reservation or not because guess what? The reason is because I've always got an excuse. I've always got that excuse there. So we've had that little conversation this week as well to make sure that we're not relying too much on that excuse. And you know, don't get me wrong. It will be that. It is that. However, we just don't want to sit back on that and, and rest on our laurels and say, yeah, that's the reason. And therefore, we don't really have to try. Um, number of forward movings was four. So that's 40% of our reservations have done forward movings. Number of new movings was seven. Oh, only seven new movings last week. That is a conversion rate. I'm embarrassed to say it, 12% from quotes to movings, 12%. That's terrible. That is terrible. So quite frankly, something had to change. Something has to change because although the revenue is okay, it's not fantastic because we've lost so much square foot, it's okay. It's on par to be just the best ever, just the best ever month in terms of revenue. However, if we don't look after these supporting KPIs, then we are in trouble. Uh, we're not in trouble, but uh, as in as in we're not going to be performing the, the KPI, the main KPI, the revenue KPI isn't going to be performing uh, as, as it is now. So we've got to protect it. Um, so number of square foot moved in last week, new square foot, 375. 375 square foot moved in last week. That is it. Oh, it upsets me even saying it. Other move-ins was two. So we had two other move-ins, which means total number of move-ins was 610 square foot. 
number of times the van was rented out. The rent, the transit was rented out seven and the Luton was rented out five. Probably because everyone's moving out. <laughs> Everybody, everybody's renting the van to move out. Bloody brilliant. That's probably the reason. Right, where did our quotes come from? Google smashed it. 77% of our quotes came from Google. That's 46 quotes. But let's not forget, Google has one of the lowest rate of conversions because it's cold traffic. They don't know where you are in Hull. So they don't know. One, they don't know how expensive you are and they don't know your location. So it's the lowest performing um, quotes is Google in terms of conversion rates. We understand that. However, it is still where the most of our movings come from is Google. Uh, word of mouth was four, so that's 7%. Passing by is four, that's 7%. Beverly 24 is one, that's 2%. Used before is one, that's uh, 2%. Social media is three, that's interesting, uh, 5%. And Leaflet <laughs> was 2% as well. Bing, blog, removals, estate agents were all zero. So here's a quick word from our sponsor. Well, I have a glass of water, a drink of water. I hope you can hear that. Do, 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 do. <laughs> right. Um, that's the water, by the way. Square foot moved in last week, 610 square foot. Square foot moved out was 1,225. Oh! It's actually even worse this week, by the way. It's got worse this week. So we had to do something. Um, <sighs> yeah. Obviously, there's, it's not... If you're increasing pricing by 20%, it's not going to be smooth sailing. It's not... It's not going to be smooth sailing, especially when you're increasing them to existing customers and new customers. One or the other, potentially less rocky waters. Two sets of customers, new and old. Uh, so yeah, new and old, existing and new. Then it's going to be rocky waters. Um, I still think it's been a very, very good self-serving uh, thing to do because obviously we've increased our revenue massively. It's been supply and demand. We're still... 88% full. So well, probably not now because we lost like 375 square foot yesterday. Uh, that's on Monday. Oh, great start to the week. So yeah, it's still being, it's still being a positive, but I want, obviously I want to share the good and the bad with you guys. Cause if I got document it, how can you guys learn from what I do? How can I learn from what I do? If I'm not open and honest, every single step of the way, first of all, it looked like it was an amazing thing to do. It was continuing to be Great move-ins, uh, conversion rate suffered a little bit, but not too much. The revenue kept going up and up and up. And um, now we're seeing the downside of increasing the cost, the, the price by 20%. So it's it's a yin and yang. Overall, I still think it's a good thing to do. However, we are seeing the store occupancy, the trajectory going down. So we need to make changes and we need to we just need to do something to make sure we don't we stop the slump. That's all we're gonna do. And yesterday we had three reservations straight away off the bat of half price. Don't get me wrong, I don't like half price uh, offers. However, sometimes it's a mean to an end. You've got to get them in. It's a loss leader. I hate I hate loss leaders. Well, you say that in the betting industries all the time. Um, and obviously more people stay longer than that. So if it can increase our square footage in, then it's a good thing. Right, so that was a negative 615. Amount of rooms moved in was nine. Amount of rooms moved out was 17. Total internal rooms occupied is 391. Containers in one, containers out zero. I didn't even know we had 29 containers, if I'm perfectly honest. I thought we only had 28. God, there's other 29 containers. I'll have to check that. I mean, I am probably wrong, and we probably have 29 containers. I just thought we had 28. So 29, question mark. Um, yeah, brilliant. 29 containers. Found an extra container from somewhere. Amount of car parking moved in, zero, out, zero, 13 altogether. Store occupancy, 87.88. God damn it, it's 88%. And what here? Anybody say any different? It's 88%. Uh, weekly average sales per move-in, merchandise. This is good. How come we can't have everything good in one week? Uh, when we have other things good, the merchandise sales is rubbish. But this was £35 and four pence. The reason why this was good, I'm under no illusions. It's only because we had seven move-ins and other people come uh, that aren't moving in to buy extra stuff who haven't moved in this week. So I'm under no illusions. Hopefully the team aren't as well, but the, the, the less move-ins, the higher the average sales per move-in. The more move-ins, the lower the average sales per move-in because you get distorted figures with current customers and other outside influences coming in and buying merchandise true period revenue is well it's not point me telling you that now because it's, it's irrelevant at the 10th of the month uh but this is another bad one this is another bad one ah. 
this is because uh, I don't know. Average sales, 21,000 we took, and that means it was £3,000. £3,000. That is the lowest for some time. Um, something else that is going to hurt me here as well. It looks as though the leak is not stopping because next week the amount of movings due is three. <laughs> so that is means we've got 100 square foot due this week. 100 square foot due. And we have seven to five to move out. Oh, man. Do you know, when I got these figures, it was on Sunday. And on Sunday, we'd been to the races all day. And we'd be having some nice little drinks. We had a bottle of wine before we went. And so when I saw these figures, I thought, ah, it's all right. Don't worry about it, Dean. And now, literally, I feel very, very uncomfortable sharing these figures. But it is what it is, isn't it? And what we've got to do, there's no point in me. Um, you don't learn when you're winning. You do not learn when you're winning. If it's sunshine all the day, all day, every day, the crops will not grow. The crops only grow when there is rain and sun. It doesn't grow without the rain. And it's just like you. You don't grow without the tough times. I'm not saying this is tough times, obviously. Jesus Christ, I apologize if obviously everybody's, people are going through a lot, lot tougher times. My sisters are in the wedding industry. I just mean that we've had a setback. And so a setback, this, this in the self-storage industry, this, this is a, a step back, a big setback, because we don't normally have setbacks. And all I've got to do is, is look at things, analyze things, and we've got to stop the bleeding. That's all we've got to do. But we only learn, we only grow when we are forced to change, when we are forced to do something. If you don't grow when you're winning, because you don't change, you don't have to change, you don't have to adapt, you don't have to do anything. You just have to continue on. And for me, this sort of, this next week, this is where I will learn, I will adapt, and hopefully, I mean, this next week, obviously, this, this time next week is going to be giving you probably some bad figures because um, the figures are already, you know, we can see that we're going to lose 725 next week. We're going to uh, only got 100 square foot moved in. So it's probably going to be a negative week. Well, I'd be amazed if it's not a negative week. However, from that point forward, from the week after that, that's when we want to see the improvements. And it's good because what we're doing is here is we are literally testing all the time. Because if I don't test with this site now, I'm in a very, very fortunate position with, with Stormwall that I can test, test, test. Because we're, we're going to be, touch wood, we're going to be always over 80% full. And therefore, now this is driving nice revenue. And it means I can test things because I want to learn. I want to have the knowledge and I want to move it forward for the next site. And so I, I know what works. I know what doesn't work. I know how far I can push it. I know how, I, how much I can squeeze um, the prices. And I can use that information that we've tested with this site on other sites, on my new sites coming forward. And so it's, it's fantastic. This is where I will learn. This is where the, this, the, the information that I'm learning today, this week, is going to set me up for, for success in the future. And just like you're going for bad, it's when you go for bad times, that is what it's doing. It's setting you up for success in the future. Okay, I, I know this is my motivational podcast. I have a daily motivational podcast called Motivated Entrepreneurs. Um, and this is what I talk about all the time. Shit like this, I love it. Right, let's have a look at the oh, weekly revenue sheet. I'm opening the weekly reports. I'm just going to check the true period revenue, how we're doing so far. Oh, actually not doing too bad on the true period versus actual revenue. Right, here we go. Last week, what did we take? We took £26,825, 33 pence overall. £23,155, 33 pence was from Stormore. We had £894 of bounce direct debits. And Willa, at Beverly, we took £3,670 with no bounce direct debits. So that was good to see. The revenue check... Stormore, the true period revenue was £24,023. The actual revenue was £23,103. Um, so good stuff there. We're negative £919, which we always are at the start of the month. Um, and then we we will catch up towards the end. True period revenue at Beverly is £3,998. The actual revenue is £3,000. £670. So the negative is 328 there. So yeah, all good there as well. Revenue, like I say, is good. So that's the main KPI, but we've got to protect that. Okay, I'm going to talk to you on Wednesday about my supporting KPIs. See you soon, dudes and dudettes. Thank you for tuning in. I love you. I appreciate you. And I will see you tomorrow. Bye.